different. Managing millions, that was resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm supposed to. God with me when the sense of the youngest. So I'm feeling different. Managing millions, that was resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm supposed to. God with me when the sense of the youngest. I'm feeling different. Managing millions, that was resilient.
watching millions. That boy resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm posted. God with me when the sense of the oldest. So I'm feeling different. Manage your millions. That boy resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm posted. God with me when the sense of the oldest. I'm feeling different. Manage your millions. That boy resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I posted. God with me with the sense of the oldest. So I'm feeling different. Manage your million. That boy resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I posted. God with me with the sense of the oldest. I'm feeling different. Manage your millions. That boy resilient. God made it resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm posted. God with me when the sense of the oldest. So I'm feeling different. Manage your millions. That boy resilient. God made it resilient, feeling like Joseph. I got way more than I'm posted. God with me when the sense of the oldest. I'm feeling different. Manage your millions. That boy resilient. Good evening, Revealing Truth Ministries. I'm Pastor Gregory Poe. And man, I got to tell you, on this rainy Wednesday evening, I am so glad to be able to host you this morning, this evening. Look, we're going to have ourselves a good time. We're going to have ourselves a good time in worship. Or then we're going to have ourselves a good time in the Word. You all know how I like to say it. It's our midweek charge up. It's our time to get ourselves into the place so that God can get us ready to do all the things that are necessary to power through the end of our week. Man, you are blessed. You are powerful. You have all that it takes to be everyone God's called you to be. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. Look, it's Wednesday night. It's the, it's April. Guys, we're in the second quarter of 2024. It, it, if you wasn't ready, I hope you are ready now. And if you're not ready, I know Pastor Deborah will do everything necessary to bring you right on in. So I'm excited for what you will receive tonight, and I'm excited for everything that I'll receive tonight. Pastor Deborah's the one giving the word. I'm going to be here to love on you. And man, we're going to have ourselves a good time. We're going to get into some worship. We're going to get into some word. And then we're going to be prepared to knock the devil's head off once again. Listen, I want to pray with you as we get started. And then we're going to get right into it. Father, I thank you for your lovely people, the amazing folks that are in this chat that are connected to this word those that are here live and those that will be here later i thank you father god that you will pour out into their lives everything that is necessary they will lack for nothing they will abound in everything i thank you that father you are lord of lords king of kings you reign supreme and this night has been ordained by you 
Therefore, everything that we could ask for, everything that we could think about, and everything that we can ma could imagine will be there for us. I think that the expectations are on an all-time high. And I, it's my prayer that we will leave victorious. Nothing will be lacking because we are in you this evening. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. Let's get into worship. Let's get into word. We're going to have ourselves a great time in service tonight.
strong, giving, loving, forgiving God. And we're here to worship, here to honor him. Glory to your name. God, we bless you knowing that you are the exceeding, you are the abundantly God, you are the favor of God. Thank you, Lord. Anybody know who he is this morning? Anybody experience him for yourself? Well, God, we worship you. We honor you. We're going to make some faith confessions this morning. Come on, let's confess right here, Say, I believe every word, every word you say. And I receive, I receive all your promises. All your promises. Say, I won't be moved. I won't be moved by what I see. I'll keep my eyes. I'll keep my eyes on what you show me. It's bigger. Bigger, bigger. Bigger. Glory to God. Now come on, just let your faith begin to rise. Let your faith begin to line up with who he is. Come on, let's declare it again. Say, I believe. I believe. Every word you say. We're talking about our Father. And I, receive I receive all your promises. All your promises. So I won't be moved by what I, I see. Moved by what I see. But I'll keep my I'll eyes, keep my eyes on what, what you show me bigger. Come on, if you believe it, shout it out bigger. bigger. Glory to God. Come on, say, I will stand. I will stand.
moment he's bringing it just be patient just trust him just trust him last time I believe I believe every word you say yes we do I receive all your promises all your promises I won't be moved by what I I see Can we give our big God worship, praise, honor? I'm going to say that again. Can we give our God, our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, a praise that he is worthy of in response of who he is? Hallelujah. When you know who you trust in, when you know who you believe in, you can rejoice even before you see it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to Wednesday night service. I am so glad that you are part of the service tonight because I just always believe that God has something that he wants to say that will always be an encouragement to us, will always help us to be the overcomers that he has said that we are. So, you know, we're just going to dive into this. I'm, like I said, I'm excited about your being here, but let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord God, for this awesome opportunity to hear from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you'll give us clarity, understanding, and an enlightenment of the word so that we can be participants. I thank you, Father, for all that you will do to strengthen us, to comfort us. I thank you, Father, for all that you will do to show us that your incredible love is always for us. And if you are for us, then who in the world can be against us? And even what 
can be against us that will cause us to walk in defeat. But Father, I thank you that we are victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, uh, just want to remind you that we are in our series again of infinitely more. And we're discovering through study of the scripture how that is possible, how that comes to pass in our lives, how we can actually walk in it and have victory over things that keep us from experiencing, you know, I want to call it the excess that God has for us. God really didn't call us to live a normal life per se in the fact that, you know, we're born again, his spirit moved on the inside of us. So that makes us not quite like the average guy. Amen. So he, we look in the word of God and we see ourselves in the word of God so that we can walk out our, in our true identity. Amen. We walk this life out in our true identity. Now on Sunday, Pastor Brian said something that really, really intrigued me. And I just gave it some thought and meditated on it and was thinking about the fact that uh, we normally say, I will not quit, therefore I cannot be defeated, meaning that uh, we are relentless in what we do, that we're always seeking God. We always believe what God said, and we keep seeking, we keep knocking, and we keep asking because we believe, we honestly believe that is going to show up. Whatever we're asking for, whatever we're seeking, whatever we need to know, we believe because we are believers and we are children of the Most High God that these things are going to show up. So of course the enemy does things to intimidate us, to make us think that maybe it won't happen, maybe it won't take place. And one of those things he was ministering to me was the fact that the enemy likes to use fear a lot. He likes to use fear as an intimidation to us. He liked to oppose us with getting us to think that perhaps what God said is really not going to come to pass. But there's some things as believers that we have to know this in our arsenal. We have to know that uh, it's in our uh, uh toolbox, let's put it that way, so that we can overcome and win in this life just as God has designed us to do. And, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of fears that are out there. The, the world throws out a lot of stuff that will cause you to ponder, wonder, have anxiety. I mean, there's fear of not having enough, fear of physical harm, fear of danger, fear of loss, fear of safety, fear, just fear, fear, fear. As a matter of fact, in the book of Job, Job said, the thing that has come upon me or the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. And more than likely it's because he was meditating on it all the time. He was thinking about it all the time. He thought his children may curse God and uh, then they would be uh, under the tyranny or under the judgment of God. So he consistently was offering uh, sacrifices to God on behalf of his children because of this fear that he had uh, that was most intimidating. I mean, it must have caused a lot of anxiety and worry every time they left and when they had a party and anything they were doing, Job was so afraid. And again, he said, the, the thing I feared the most has come up on me. Why? Because I was concentrating on those things. So I took the time to look up, you know, they do surveys all the time, right? Uh, the government does surveys, uh, people who are doing particular studies as surveys. So I looked up the things that Americans, they say, are most fearful of, are, um, yeah, most fearful of, have fear of, or most fearful in. And I come to find out the 10 top ones, uh, corrupt government officials. Can you believe that? I know you can. People are fearful of corrupt Government officials, 60% of the people who took the survey, that's what they said. Uh, the second thing is economic financial collapse. 54% are afraid of economic and financial collapse. 52% said that they were afraid of nuclear weapons, Russia and nuclear weapons. And of course, you know, fears, let me put it this way, Fears come to the average person, and I'm calling it the average person because I'm saying that as believers, we're not average. But to the average person, fear comes based upon what's going on around them, what's happening in the world, what the most talk is about, the conversation, the, the news people keep putting out there. That develops a fear 
type of an atmosphere. So because of what was going on in the Ukraine or going on in the Ukraine, people became fearful of Russia using nuclear weapons. They are fearful of becoming involved in another world war because, uh, you know, America uh, as a people, we've always wanted to help defend other people in other countries. So it was like, we're afraid that there may be a, a world war. Um, people fearful of loved ones becoming seriously ill, seriously ill. And some of that had to do with COVID. So here people developed a fear. Again, all of this based upon what is happening in the world, what is going around, going, uh, going around or what is uh, being said to us and repeatedly said to, to us. People that you love, uh, people are fearful of people that they love dying. Next thing, uh, get this pollution of drinking water. I mean, I really wouldn't have thought that would have hit the uh, top 10 list, but it did. Uh, biological warfare. Again, all that has to do, some of this stuff has to do with what happened with COVID. Uh, cyber terrorism, because that's, on, that's, that's being emphasized because um, uh, cyber terrorism. Okay, because I know our insurance company approached us here at the church concerning these things, concerning uh, cyber uh, things happening and do you want to get insurance concerning it? And they gave us the, the whole thing about, uh, and again, it's all fear-based. Uh, and then the last one, believe it or not, is not having enough money for the future. Not having enough money for the future. Well, but the economic and financial collapse was number two. So I guess somewhere on there is not to have enough money because if they people feel like if the economy is good, they will have the money. Did you hear what I said? They figure if the economy is good, then money will be available to them. See how much people depend upon the world system to determine whether they are good or not, or whether things are going to go well for them or not. Well, as believers, we're taught not to fear. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, um, God says, fear not um, the least amount of times because people have counted it and sometimes they add in other things uh, like anxiety. But I actually wanted to know how many times was it said in the Bible where God approached people, said to people, fear not. And so it's no less than 100 times. Some people have counted and believe that it's 365 times. But nonetheless, over 100 times, God is telling his people, do not fear. Do not be anxious for anything. Do not have a care because God is talking to us on the basis of the fact that we have a relationship with him and that he's going to be our protector, that he's going to be our comforter, that he's the one who's going to supply our needs, that he's the one who gives us increase in promotion. That God is saying, you're dependent upon me so you don't have to fear the things that the world fear. However, again, the enemy uses fear as a stepping stone to cause us not to trust God, not to believe God because of the outside things that are happening to us versus what's going on internally on the inside of us. And so uh, God has um, uh, or God is at this moment, I believe with all my heart, helping us to understand getting us to see that we need to trust him above everything else. Trust him above everything else because everything he said is going to come to pass. Therefore, no matter what happens, no matter what we see, no matter what situation we're in, God is saying, if you seek me, you will find me. If you ask, you will receive. If you knock, the door is going to be open. God says, I have made myself available to you so you don't have to walk in fear. God is saying, I'm, I'm helping you to learn to trust me. And that's the great thing about God. God didn't say, trust me and then walk away. God didn't say, trust me and walk away. God says, trust me. I'm going to give you faith to believe. I'm going to give you the capacity to believe above your five senses. I'm going to give you 
what is necessary for you to be able to believe everything that I am telling you, everything that I say to you, I'm going to give you the ability to believe that and to trust that. And to me, that's an awesome foundation to actually know that in itself. So God is offering us, like I said, opportunities to see something different, to see something different. I know what I heard with my natural ears. I know what I saw with my natural eyes. I know what I sensed in my body when it wasn't feeling well. I know how I know my emotions. I am very well familiar with those things. All of us are familiar with our senses. Every one of us are familiar. I mean, um, sensory perception, all of us have practiced using those things. All of us have practiced since childhood having emotional fits. Come on. I know we think that that stopped with children. Well, it did. If something don't happen to a child to help them to mature and grow beyond that, you have adults, you know them, that have emotional fits just like a child. And God is in the business of maturing us past operating by our senses. He's telling us there's another way. There's a better way to see that. So we're going to look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. And uh, I'm going to read this out of the NIV. Um, but God is telling us again that there is a better way for us to, 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 to look. There's another I, I like to say God wants us to look again. God wants us to look again. So in 2 uh, Kings chapter 6 and verse 16, it said, he says, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, this is an account of Elijah and Elisha, or this is an account, I apologize, with Elisha. He's talking to his, the servant, that is the guy who's serving him, because he's afraid in the situation because of what he sees with his natural eyes. And so Elisha is not afraid. And he speaks to him in confidence. He said, there be more with us than it is with them. Now, I want to take us back to when Elijah and Elisha were walking together. Now, Elisha saw something happen with Elijah. Elisha, I hope y'all following this, Elisha with the S, <laughs> um, was being groomed by Elijah with a J. He was being groomed by him. And so he is following him and tracking him. And he had a request of him. He says, I want a double portion of your anointing. And so Elijah with a J <laughs> told him that if he, he told him that was a tall order. He said, but if you see me when I leave, then it will happen for you. So this is what happened to Elisha. It's not like Elisha did not have any experience in the fact that Everything you see does not mean that that's all that is there. Everything you see does not mean that that's all that is there. So what he did, it goes on to say, and Elisha, pray, uh, excuse me, the prophet Elijah prayed and asked God to, um, uh, wait a minute, I apologize. Let me get it straight again. Elisha had the experience with Elijah because when he told him, you have to see me leave. Well, what happened is when Elijah ascended to heaven, it says chariots of fire appeared between the two of them. And Elijah, the older prophet, ascended into heaven. And so he sees this. And now the anointing, the same anointing that was upon Elijah is double on Elisha. So he had already seen and had an encounter with something that was supernatural. He had already seen something that the naked eye had not seen. And it goes on to say in that same account that the prophets, 
There were other prophets that were following and tracking. They said, let us go find, let us go find uh, Elijah. And he was like, you're not going to find him because I saw into the spiritual realm. I saw him ascending to heaven. Well, they didn't see that. What does that mean? Their spiritual eyes weren't open. He was able to see what no one else saw. And so I'm saying this because God has given us the ability to see what other people don't see. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to physically have those type of experiences, although some people do, but it means that there is another realm that's operating along with the natural realm that we see. And so here we have the prophet talking to his understudy, I want to say that, talking to his servant, and he prays and he says, God, open his eyes so that he may see. He said, I don't have to see it anymore. I already know it exists. I already know that there is a power. And I'm going to read you a wonderful scripture. You may run around your house when you hear it, but I'm going to, sh I'm, I'm, I want him to see what actually is taking place. The enemy has come in, but you've got to understand that God is stronger, bigger, better than the enemy. You've got to understand that there is work, there's more working for us than working for them. So again, it says, and Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of, chariots of fire all around Elijah. So he was able to see something that already existed. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you get this. See something that already existed. He just couldn't see it with his natural eyes. That's all. But it did not mean that it wasn't there. So as believers, if God tells us to seek, ask and knock, we got to understand that what we're seeking for already exists. The things that we need to know already exist. These things are not just come happening uh, at the moment, but they already exist. God has already made preparations for those type of things, but we have to learn to think differently. We have to learn to, or we have to be open. Let me say this. We have to be open to the spirit of God for him to uh, say something different. Tell us something different. Show us something different. We have to be open to the one who is supposed to be directing our lives and, and, and showing us the truth concerning what is actually taking place. Amen. So again, we must think differently. So now let us look at second Chronicles chapter 32 and verse seven. You're going to like this. I promise you, you're going to like this. You might want to pull your Bible out and look at it, <laughs> pull it up on your iPhone. But it says, uh, in second Chronicles, chapter 32 and verse seven, second Chronicles chapter 32 and verse seven and eight. I'm going to read these out of the NI, the, uh, the uh, NIV version of the Bible. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater power with us than with him. There it is. There is a greater power with us than with them. With him is only, get this guys, with him is only the arm of the flesh. It's only what he can accomplish in the flesh. He said your enemy, the thing that you see can only accomplish things in the flesh, but you've got a power working in you and for you that's greater than what you see or what it appears to be. That's why we as believers keep on believing. Even though we don't see it, we keep on believing because there is a power working on our behalf. There's a power, glory to God, that's available to us. So we don't fear things in the flesh. Because that's the only thing they got is the flesh. It says it so clearly here. He said, but with us is the Lord, our God, to help us and to fight our battles. We have the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, that's going to come to our rescue. And he said, and the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. So remember, no matter what we face, there is a power 
that's greater than whatever it is that we're looking at. And I'm talking about anything, everything. When we're even when we're talking about our children, when we're talking about our finances, when we're talking about peace, no matter what it is, hallelujah, if it came to us in the flesh, you got to understand there is a power greater than that. And we keep seeking deliverance for our family members. We keep seeking. We keep believing that if God says that by the stripes of Jesus, we're healed, then we just we just we set our oh, guys, we set our minds like flint. And you, we talk to God about show me what you see. Show me what you see, God. Help me to change my direction. We talked about years ago about the lens in which we look out of. We're supposed to be looking out of the lens of faith. That's why God gave it to us. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm preaching myself happy. I'm preaching myself happy. We have to see other things. Let's look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. And let's look at verse 1. God is speaking to Abram at this time. And in verse one, it says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Be not afraid, Abram. Here it is. Don't be afraid, Abram, because Abram Abram was in a situation where he's going out and he's defeated the enemy. But then he's surrounded by people who don't like him. So it's like, you know what, God, they may retaliate. But God is telling him, don't worry about it, Abram. Don't you be afraid. He says, I am your shield. God said, I am your shield. I am your protective covering in what and in your protective covering from your enemies. And you know something? A lot of times we try to discover who our enemies are. Unless God revealed them to you, he's handling it. Unless God reveals them to you, he's handling it. He does not need your input. So a lot of times people are like, I got to discover who my enemy is. No, no. God's going to take care of my enemy. If you're working against me, I got more working for me because God is for me and not against me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have infinitely more working for me than against me. Yes, you may be working against me. Yes, you may have some things that you're doing to try to derail me. Yes, you may be doing things to keep me from living this um, life that God has intended for me to live infinitely more. But I got more working for me, hallelujah, than you got working for you. Even when it comes to principalities and powers and rulers, the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians that Jesus defeated the enemy. He defeated the enemy. So the only thing he can do is try to frighten us and cause us to be fearful and cause us to have anxiety so that we don't call on the greater power that is working for us. So we don't call on the uh, the resources that God has given us. We don't call on uh, the Holy Spirit to give us give us wisdom and guidance. We won't call it because we are in so, so you know, fear is meant to paralyze us. Fear is meant to paralyze us. Hallelujah. So God says again over a hundred times to the people of God, don't you be afraid. Don't you be intimidated by the enemy. Yes, there is an enemy, but we're not going to keep giving him all the props. We're not going to keep talking about what he is doing. We're going to talk about how big our God is, how great our God is. And we're going to keep on, we're going to keep on track. Amen. Hallelujah. He says also, I'm not only your shield, Abraham, but I'm your very great reward. I like that. I'm your very great reward. Abram, there's a reward in store for you. It's a reward, hallelujah, for walking with me. And when we, when we become believers, when we become uh, Christians, we're walking with God, mm. He has given us right standing with him. So we are the righteous. And he says there is a reward for us having come over into the kingdom of God. And this is what Abraham said. But Abraham said, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my state is Eliezer of Damascus. So Abraham is not actually even questioning whether God is going to protect him. And whether God's going to take care of him, he's like, hey, God, what about this reward part? 
What about this reward part? Hmm. I'm thinking about all the blessings that we see in the word of God. What about that part, God? What about that part, God? And and Abram said, you have given me no child. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. Here, God is saying, "Uh, that's not true. That's not true, Abraham. I'm going to reward you with the son. It was always in my plan to do so, but I'm going to reward you with a son. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what did he do? He says, Abram, you're going to have to see something different. You're going to have to see something different. You're going to have to, you're going to have to use your holy imagination and you're going to have to see something different. I'm going to make a covenant with you. And uh, so he took Abraham outside, had him to look at the stars. He said, I'm going to put something in your imagination so you can see beyond what you see. So look at the stars. That's how many children. That's how many heirs you're going to have. Look at the sand. That's how many heirs. Jesus, God is about, let me change your perspective. Let me have you look at something else. So there's some people are thinking, well, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm blessed in this area. I'm blessed in that area. But God, what about this? God, I haven't left any areas out. I, <laughs> I haven't left any areas out. I'm going to include that. Hallelujah. I will include that as well. Amen. Yes. Ah, uh, you know, uh, as I was thinking about this, uh, I was thinking about the fact that some of us only accept what's being presented to us. But God says through the eyes of faith that I have given you, you can see something else. You can see something else. You can see something different. When we start looking at things, hallelujah, that's impacting our belief. As Pastor Brian was saying on Sunday, you have to listen to another voice. You got to be able to look at something different. You got to be able to see what God, what God sees. You got, you, you got to change your perspective. You got to change what you're gazing at. You got to change what you are looking at. Because I wrote this down, the eye of faith sees the reality of the divine presence and protection that other people cannot see. Let me read that again. The eye of faith sees the reality of divine presence and protection when others cannot see. They're looking in the dark instead of looking in the light. Uh, It's interesting to me when you go back into the Old Testament and you see how God moved in people's lives then, because there were things that had already been predestined for them that they couldn't see with their natural eyes. Think about it. God knew that they would come to the Red Sea. He knew it. He knew that the children of Israel would come to the Red Sea. They escaped from Egypt. But he'd already planned a highway, a road, a passageway in the middle of the Red Sea. Nobody could see it. No one knew it existed. No one knew that it was possible. But God did. God did. So there are highways. Hallelujah. There are things that we cannot see with our natural eyes that God has already planned and stored for us. So we have to make sure that our vision is proper. We have to make sure that we keep looking when others fail to see and cannot see. You have to see what God said. I'm going to say that again. When others can't see what you see. I don't know if I could even repeat it, but when others can't see what you see, you don't fail to keep looking at what God has said. You You keep asking, you keep knocking. And guess what, guys? It's not a begging. It's not begging God, please, 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 please. It's not a begging God because we don't have to beg God for anything. But you just keep on asking. He said, it's a continuous life of a believer. 
to keep asking and anticipating and expecting for God to come through, for God to do what he says he's going to do. Now, I want to look at the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one and verse 18. I do want to read this to you out of the Passion Translation. You're going to love it. Ephesians chapter one and verse 18. It says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. This is Paul's prayer. Hey, the Ephesians have gotten born again. They've been reminded of the fact that they've been engrafted into the kingdom of God. They have been reminded that the same promises that uh, God gave to the children of Israel, the same promises belong to all of us, that there's neither Greek nor Jew. There's neither male or female that we all have access to him. We all have access to the promises of God. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. We all have access. And so he begins to pray about these things. And he says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Ooh, let the word of God paint pictures in your imagination. He says, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. He said, I want you to experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, the expectation. Where are your expectations? Your expectations are supposed to be in God. And Paul is praying that our imaginations, we allow the word of God, we allow the Holy Spirit to work on our imagination so we can see ourselves, hallelujah, walking in the things that God has promised us. We, we don't shut our eyes to it, but we allow, hallelujah, for God to highlight things in us. He says, he wants us to know the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy ones. Now, let me explain that. God said that when we got born again, he inherited us. When we got born again, God said, I inherited you. So because you are my inheritance, because you don't belong to you, you now belong to me. Then I am the one who's going to watch over you. I'm the one who's going to take care of you. I'm the one who's going to provide for you. You got to understand that I inherited you. You are my possession now. You know, the scripture says you're not your own. You know, uh, sometimes in America, we don't like that. I am not in bondage to anybody. But the thing of it is <laughs> to be owned by God, to be his possession. And I know I'm saying this like it's, it's like material things, but I want you to understand the magnitude of God's commitment towards us. And so he wanted us to know, I inherited you. I'm going to take care of you. I want you to have the full, uh, as much as you can take of who I am while you're on this earth. I want to enlighten you. I want to illuminate to you who I really am. Glory to God. And listen, guys, Practically everything that we're saying to you has to do with your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Your relationship with God. I'm sorry. Uh, well, no, I'm not sorry. I'm, I keep saying hallelujah because it's glory to God to me. When I think about, when I think about God's love towards us and I think about how serious God is about us, when I think about the fact that God says, I am so serious about you. Do you really think that I want to or would allow the enemy to take advantage of you. He said, but you got to let me show you some stuff. You got to let me show you me. You got to let me uh, get involved. You got to, you got to understand our union together. Now you got to understand mm, how I want to use my power, my ability, my might, my strength. I want to show you how good I am. Mm. And he says uh, in verse 19, I pray that you will continually, continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. He says, I want you to continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. And it goes on to say that then we will be an advertisement 
for him, an advertisement for him. I'm just saying, God is telling us, I'm, I'm working with you. You're not by yourself in any of this. If I said infinitely more, I mean just that. And I mean it on all levels. Our expectation needs to be high. Our anticipation needs to be high. When we go to God, we're not going to him thinking if he, he, he may answer, he may, he possibly could respond, but we got to understand that God is going to respond. He is going to respond. And because we know that as believers, we keep asking, we keep seeking, we keep knocking, we keep saying, show me more. We keep saying, help me to experience more. We keep saying, God, let me be a part of that. We keep saying to God that Ooh, what you put on the inside of me, let this flow on the outside of me. Let me show the abundance of love that you show towards me. God, just what people say, just use me. <laughs> just use me. Glory to God, hallelujah, so that I can be um, an example of how good you are. People may not hear my words, but they will notice my life. They will notice my life. One last scripture for you for this evening, Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10. God spoke this to the prophet, and when I read it, I said, God, I receive it. God, I receive it. And I'm praying you'll receive it too. Isaiah chapter three and verse 10. He said, tell the righteous, it will be well with them. For they will enjoy the fruits of their deeds. Now he's not talking about earning things from God. That's not what he's talking about. But he's talking about us walking in uh, uh, with the consciousness of our right standing with him. Our consciousness of a right standing with him. But he said to tell you, it will be well with you and you will enjoy, hallelujah, this life of righteousness. You will enjoy it. My prayer is that you will receive that tonight in the name of Jesus. No matter what is happening, it will be well with you. No matter what goes on, it will be well with you. And we like to say it all the time, all is well but we got to understand that there's something that backs that saying. There's, there's a word from the Lord that is backing that. And the Bible tells us the word of God is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It has an ability in it to bring itself to pass. We don't have to make it happen. The word itself acts on its own. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord God, for Holy Spirit always, always in the midst of us to give us clarity and enlightenment of your word, to, to show us who you are, Lord God, to show us the relationship that you desire with us. Show us how to even develop and have that relationship with the Father. I thank you, Lord God, that you are with us. I thank you, Lord God, that not only are you with us, you took it a step farther, and now you're in us, available at all times. Mm. So, Father, we just give you praise and we give you honor because of your care for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, listen, guys, if there's anyone here, anyone listening that uh, you have not made the commitment to make, uh, Jesus, Lord of your life, because that is the open door to having this awesome relationship with God. God knows you already. He just wants you to know him. And how we come to know him again, the door is open. When we receive, get this, a gift that he gave that made it possible for us to develop uh, uh, a kononia, uh, a closeness with him. It's not just information we have about him, but a living live experience with God. And I, I know for some of you may be saying, what in the world? Well, listen, guys, I was where you were one day. At one time, I was where you were. I was trying to figure out, so how do you have a relationship with God? So does God talk to people? Is that possible? Does he just pick out people that he talked to? Is it possible to actually be united with God that way? Well, let me tell you from experience, it is. 
it is. <laughs> Ooh, it definitely is. And God wants to talk to you. He wants to converse with you. Oh, yes, he does indeed. And again, that comes when we receive the gift of, uh, uh, of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Yes, Jesus died on the cross. He rose again for our victory so that he could cancel the sins, the things that we had done against God, even though we didn't know it had happened. And I'm just saying that that's the, that's the open door. That's the open door. The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose again, you shall be saved. It has nothing to do with your behavior. Your salvation has nothing to do with your behavior. Your uh, coming to know God and, 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 and God being open with you and your understanding and hearing him has nothing to do with your behavior. It has to do with what Jesus Christ has done. So I'm just going to lead you in this simple word of prayer. If you would repeat after me, God, thank you for making a way for me to have a relationship with you. I accept forgiveness of my sins because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you, Lord for accepting me. Amen. Listen, if, if you got lost in the wording, God weighs the hearts and intentions of people. However you verbalize it, God received it. And this is what I love for you to do. I love for you to contact Revealing Truth Ministries. Uh, shortly there will be, a, shortly there will be uh, ways you can do that on the screen. Uh, because we want to talk with you about this awesome decision that you have just made. People here are delighted because of what you have just done. Heaven is delighted because of what you've just done, because now you've opened a doorway or a doorway has been opened for you to have access to God. And we just want to uh, talk with you concerning this decision that you have made. Also, just want you to know it's important, very important that you connect with a Bible teaching church. Revealing Truth Ministries is a Bible teaching church. We want to see you make spiritual progress. And if you don't know what that means, we want to see you develop in your relationship with God. And we are love to come along beside you to do that. So you have the opportunity now also to join Revealing Truth Ministries. Whether you are in the Tampa Bay area, whether you are one who looks on uh, line, uh, we'll tell you how you connect with us in either of those manners, in either of those ways, so we can be a part of this wonderful journey that you have just begun. So uh, again, just type in the chat, uh, look, do, uh, you can um, look, not look at the QR code, but the QR, QR code is available so that you can make those choices and let us know about the choices that you have made. Also, we want you to know that prayer is always available to you. You can call again, QR code, phone numbers, how you get in contact is being made available to you uh, because we want to see, we want to see you progress. We want you to uh, be able to experience the infinitely more that God has designed for us. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to receive this evening's offering and what a blessing to be able to give. What a blessing to be able to sow. What a blessing it is to impact other people's lives and helping them to understand that God loves them. And so we use the resources that come into Revealing Truth Ministries to reach other people on all different types of platforms. I mean, we were so excited over this past Easter. Instead of us just being inside the church and celebrating Jesus, we went outside and celebrate Jesus because sometimes people need to see your life. They need to see what is happening with you. And let me tell you, people were drawn. They most certainly was drawn. Who can't, who's not drawn by love? Who's not drawn by care? Who's not drawn by the fact that we uh, see you? We see you, amen? So again, uh, everything that you give, we are using this to advance the kingdom of God. So we ask you to be generous and God has designed us as people to be generous people. 
Yes, he has. And as a matter of fact, he says, for those who delight in giving, he said, I'll give you even more seed to sow. The thing of it is, is everybody has to start at a place. Everybody has to start at a place uh, of giving. And let me tell you something, it grows. And then what you have to give grows. Here, from experience, from experience, <laughs> from experience that, and God is no respecter of persons. He will bring resources into your hands so that you have the ability to impact other people's lives for the kingdom of God. He will, he will, he will, he just will. Because God loves people and he wants, as he wants the whole world to actually be saved. And guess what? We are his recruiters. <laughs> we are his recruiters. Amen. So thank you so very much for what you give. We appreciate it. Uh, we, I'm telling you, we try to stretch everything you give us and figure out ways, even creative ways to reach others so that they'll know the love of God and so that they could have an awesome relationship uh, with the Father as well. Amen. So again, thank you. All the various ways that you can give are being made available for you now. And uh, listen, guys, have an awesome, awesome evening. Uh, be blessed because, you know, that word for us means that we're a group of people who are empowered to prosper. Well, enjoy your evening and look forward to seeing you this weekend on a Sunday. You know me. I'm going to tell you, get with fellow believers on a Sunday. Stir one another up. Incite each other to good works. Listen, there's nothing like talking to, agreeing with, being encouraged by, and also uh, having uh, places of accountability. And we do that through coming together with other believers. Again, streaming, in person. Listen, get with another believer. Amen. Love you guys. Have an awesome evening.